hey, I've got the delegates. They're all going to be right here on my Zoom screen. So from the studio in the bonus room above the garage on the north side of Fort Bell, South Carolina, in the shadow of Charlotte, the buckle of the Bible Belt, and the foot of Mount Belzoni, this is the YouTube show and podcast we like to call YCDP TV. Hey, everybody. I am the host for the program. My name is Gary Pierce, and the program is going to be the delegates. We got, not the beef, we got the delegates. I thought it would be an interesting thing to do after the South Carolina Democratic Convention that I attended down in Columbia to do a little civics type program, uh, talking to some of the delegates that are going to be going to Chicago from York County and see what the mechanics are, see how they get selected, what they're going to do or what they think they're going to do when they get to Chicago. And then everything changed. And so <laughs> let's meet... Let's meet some of our delegates from, uh, from York County that are going to be heading to Chicago. You guys all excited about this? Yes, very much so. Yeah, super excited. <laughs> all right. We've got our uh, York County Democratic Party chair, Nikita Jackson. Say hi to everybody, Nikita. Hello. <laughs> and uh, Ryan Stevens. Hi. And finally, an alternate delegate. John, you're only an alternate. Didn't get enough votes. <laughs> John Holder. Wait for somebody to get sick or something. Hello. Okay. Oh, so so that that's when you can step in and take over. If somebody misses a vote or something, um, yeah. So I mean, st stay healthy, Ryan. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I already had COVID, so I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so among the delegates here in York County, is is there like a leader of the delegates? Or, in York County, no, but for the delegation of South Carolina, there is um, a whip that will get us, help us along um, with the delegation uh, for us all. All right. So what I want to do is get uh, some of that civics lesson in here and learn how this worked. We have a professor, a retired professor, but I understand you're going back to work. I'm teaching American parties and practical politics this fall. At uh, Winthrop could, still. Yes, could not resist. Could not stay away. All right, so we got a professor, and uh, and, uh, and Nikita and, and uh, Ryan, you guys are probably pretty expert in how this all works as <laughs> well. So I do want to do the civics, but once the entire Democratic world blew up um, with President Biden stepping down from the campaign and endorsing Kamala Harris— uh, everything changed. And I think we, uh, everybody wants to hear how that's going to affect you guys as delegates in addition to just how this all works. So um, who wants to go first and tell me when it was your head blew up? I think it was at 153 or 158 <laughs> on Sunday, July the 20th. That, that's when your head blew up? Yeah, that's when the, that's when the letter came out from President Biden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so first he said he's stepping down. I was watching MSNBC almost in real time. He said he's stepping down, and they all say, "Well, okay, now who's going to be uh, who's going to be the nominee? How, is this going to be a food fight? Is there going to be a mini primary?" And then, like twenty minutes later, he said, "Oh, and, and by the way, I forgot to mention I'm endorsing Kamala Harris, my vice president." And everybody said, oh. Whew. "Yeah, I was um, at the Blumenthal Theater in Charlotte watching the Back to the Future musical, which I highly recommend if you have a chance to see it. And there was a technical stop down because there was some problem on stage. And while we were sitting there, I looked at my phone and Ryan had posted in our uh, York County Democratic Party officer chat the letter from the White House saying the president was stepping down. So um, that was kind of an interesting way to find that out. And then by the time they got the, um, the problem corrected and the play went back on, uh, he had already endorsed Vice President Harris by the time the, the play was over. <laughs> it was fast. Yes. Okay, so Ryan, where were you when your head blew up? Um, I was here at home, and I happened to just get on Twitter because it was a crazy weekend, and... I saw the letter and I kind of just skimmed it at first. And then I looked down, and I was like, wait, what? And so um, I quickly, my phone just was 
texting and I was calling other people to see like what is going to happen. And I was in shock and surprised that he decided to bow out of the race and it provided a great opportunity to endorse the vice president. And so she has been having a moment. I think. So I know uh, from things I've seen from you posting on Facebook, Ryan, you have been a big Biden supporter. Um, Nikita and John, were you, were you, every delegate was committed to Biden because you had to sign an oath saying that you would, you would vote for Biden as part of the delegation. But how did you feel independently of that? I've been a Biden supporter from day one. You know, I've always supported him. I have pictures of him kissing me on my forehead when he came um, here through York County. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just enjoy and I love um, President Biden. So, hey, I've, I've been riding with Biden for a long time, <laughs> I will say that. When he dropped out and endorsed Kamala, were you on board right away? I, I was, yes. And I will tell you, um, we had a volunteer drop in on July the 19th, I think it was. And, you know, a lot of uh, volu- a lot of people came in. We had about over 50 volunteers that came in who just wanted to to hear information to talk about it. And so there were a group of people who was like, you know, what's going on? We're here. They're talking about his age. And, you know, the debate was not so good. And the, the one thing that I told the people that was at the Democratic headquarters is my grandfather told us as we were growing up, y'all young folks don't know how to fare during troublesome times. Y'all give up too easy. And that's what I told the group that was there on that on two Saturdays ago. You know, regardless of what's going on around us, we're going to have trouble sometimes. Things are going to come our way, bumps in the road. But what's the true character of an individual is how they stand during those times. And so uh, a lot of the people that stopped by was like, you know, those were encouraging words. Nikita, we're grateful that your father, grandfather told you those things. But yes, that was my message to the group. We got to know how to stand during troublesome times. And we as Dems, we've known how to do that um, for quite a long time. You know, this isn't nothing new to us. Um, So that was my message on the 20th. Then the 21st happened. And after he announced that he was endorsing Kamala, um, Vice President Kamala Harris, you know, it kind of a burden was relief because you had the chatter. You know, a lot of people were very concerned. A lot of people were worried about what was going to be the next. Uh, but it seemed like, you know, the heavens opened up in all honesty. In, indeed, <laughs> it's, it, it did. Uh, John, what was your take? I'm seeing a lot more enthusiastic, a lot more enthusiasm for Vice President Harris than I was for President Biden. I, I was you know, happy to support him. I was looking forward to going to convention as a supporter of his, but Vice President Harris has inspired a lot of people. And, you know, one of the things, I mean, of course, they were making issues of the president's age. So now he's dropped out. And a lot of Democrats are saying, who's the old guy now? huh?" (laughs) And, you know, she's young, she's energetic, she's charismatic, she's history making. So uh, and she is now doing better in the polls against Trump than uh, President Biden was. I admire the president tremendously for making that decision because I know how difficult and painful it it was for him. But this has been good for the Democratic Party. We have a stronger candidate now. So. I was surprised but not shocked that he made that decision, but I think it turns out to have been the right decision. Okay, and if anybody cares what I think, I was never a big Biden supporter. I didn't vote for him in the primary, but once he was the candidate, I was happy to vote for him as the candidate. Uh, In terms of this election, um, I, I put my hat in the ring to be one of the delegates. I didn't make it. I'm envious of all you well, guys. Well, neither did I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you made it as an alternate, which means you're still going to Chicago. Yes. And, and I will be just sitting here wishing wow. I was eating some of that pizza. Um, and so I signed the pledge, which I had to do, and said I'd be happy to vote for Biden if he's the, the nominee. But I think that 
having Kamala Harris as uh, as our candidate is a stronger position. Mm. And and I am no political pundit. It's just what I felt like as just kind of an individual citizen. So now, how does that affect you guys as delegates? And then we'll start talking about what this, you know, being a delegate to the Democratic National Convention, what that means. But how, how does it affect your position as delegates? When the president decided to withdraw from the race, we were unbound delegates. But we quickly, um, the South Carolina delegation met that evening and quickly um, unanimously supported um, the vice president to, we would support as a delegation, the vice president to receive the Democratic nomination. And for for me, it's um, the, the process overall was, I knew in 2019, I met the vice president, then Senator at a, a fundraiser and I was ushered into like a back room and had a moment with her and i knew then she was eventually going to be president um at some point in her career i knew there was no one else that i was going to support as a delegate than the vice president of the united states because when i think of the south the democratic party um the democratic party base is black women it is um other people of color primarily and you know, I think it's it's time that we truly see and honor the 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 individuals who have given so much for democracy in this country and the qualifications that she has compared to uh, Donald Trump and uh, Donald Trump's running mate uh, are night and day. And it's just a really good, just feels like a relief. I feel like it's a watching um, some of her stump speeches last night and just the energy that she brings and the the amount of crowds and even my friends that are political are asking me how to get involved how they can go to a rally how they can get different things and you know really get in, who else they need to vote for on ballots and i'm like this well you live in this state let's get you in con plugged in here and so it's really of a, a exciting to see how many people are getting engaged and really i was even talking with my grandmother who is typically a republican and she's like you know i think i may vote for kamala like this is a really big deal i remember jfk and i remember like all these great presidents and she just gives us a breath of fresh air and i was like okay grandma so yeah that's just like it, it's i feel inspired so in a little bit of real politic, we don't expect her to win South Carolina. And anybody want to hold on to that, what I'll call a fantasy? Uh, I have I mean, a reputation as a, as a political <laughs> scientist to protect, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to happen. I mean, we can, our goal is to win in state houses and state senate districts uh where we can and um and i think that is for another discussion on another podcast but i think it's important to be realistic and say you know in this election cycle that the odds of south carolina turning blue are slim to none it took stacy abrams 10 years and i think it took the the michigan democratic party 20 years to flip the state house and state senate up there and so it's really just encouraging people to come out and vote. And I also do a two part thing. Um, you may vote for the president, but do you know who your state senator is? Do you know who your city council person is? Because that's 98% of what is touched on the daily lives of who we are as people. Yeah, th that's where I was going to go. We may not be able to, to uh, put South Carolina in Kamala Harris's column, but we have several candidates for down ballot races here in your county that have a legitimate shot at, at winning their elections. It's not going to be easy for any of them, but they have a shot. And maybe this will bring out even more people that can help them. Mm -hmm. Nikita, and I'm meeting with three of them over the next two days. <laughs> excellent. Nikita, you said, oh, Gary, don't ask me any hard questions. That was a hard question, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it, yes and no. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm with everybody else, you know, 
we may not be able to win, but everyone votes count. So, you know, regardless if we can turn South Carolina blue or not, let your voice be heard. And by voting, you're taking a stance and we can see what the potential of turning our state blue by everyone in South Carolina casting their vote for Vice President Kamala Harris to be our president. And, you know, everybody talks about uh, my vote don't count, but everything we do is data driven, data based. So we need to get the, the number of votes up to show that Democrats will vote in the state of South Carolina. And so that's what we need to focus on. We may not be a swing state. Uh, we may be red, but guess what? We got people who are willing to go out here and vote. And I think by President Biden endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris, I think, like I said, the heavens open up and it has revigorated so many people that was just who was lost in despair. But with this happening, it has really turned around. And I hope the fire and the momentum stays until November the 5th and not even until November the 5th. We got to keep it going. And I think that's what happened with with Democrats. We get too complacent. We get comfortable and then we just retreat back. But we got to keep and maintain this momentum throughout so that we can stay energized so that when tough time comes, we don't fare. We don't give up. We're already in the race and all we got to do is dig our heels in, lace up our mm -hmm. boots and keep it moving. That's you know, why she's the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to piggyback off of what Nikita just said, you know, your vote does count, especially when it comes to Democratic primaries. Joe Biden would not be our president if it was not for South Carolina and the in our voice being heard. So we do have a choice and we do have the ability to impact change um where we are and there's just one thing i want to say about um you know you asked about how the switch affects us everybody who voted for joe biden to be president voted in the in the primary voted for kamala harris to be on the ticket with him yes right so it, it's not you know it's a change but it's not somebody coming out of left field and suddenly becoming the nominee we, we all voted for her, too. My estimation is that it would have been damaging to have a highly condensed primary and a food fight at the convention. And yeah. I'm, I, uh, I'll, I'll bring up my conspiracy theory in that I think the timing of Biden's uh, dropping out and, and endorsing Kamala Harris was perfect. Earlier, we have the food fight. Later, we have no time to, to regroup. Right then, he took all the air out of the Republican convention and whatever bounce Trump was getting from his assassination attempt. All that disappeared. We captured the news cycle for more than a week, and we still have it. It was good timing, even if it was unintentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think that they could put together that much and, and make that the timing. Um, I, I was really super impressed how fast all of the big names got on board. All the people that could have been in contention, all the big names who could have been in contention for that slot said, I'm endorsing Kamala. The timing was right. Everybody had to jump on board. There was no time to have any doubt or have any questions. You know, we had to go with what happened because it was it was just amazing how thing the turn of events happened and so why not her you know she's been the vp uh, for three and a half years we're confident in her why not you know put your support behind vp um, harris because we want to win we got to win there's no doubt about it there are going to be some people who are detractors, uh, even among the Democrats. Uh, she was not 100% popular among all Democrats and probably still isn't. We wouldn't expect anybody to be. But people have come around to her pretty fast, and it, you know it's exciting to see. And all those Zoom calls. We just put an episode here on the podcast. I talked to some folks who had been on those Zoom calls. Uh, Ryan and, and John, did, uh, Nikita wasn't able to get on the Zoom calls. Were either of you on any of those Zoom calls? I was on a white dudes for Harris. Uh, I did another one for like, but I'm also plan. I'm meeting with people tomorrow to plan 
a progressive evangelical one for Harris and getting some uh, people corralled to do that. And I'll see how that goes. You know, I think it's great coalition building. Um, at first, I was like, these are just so crazy. But, you know, when you think of running a huge campaign like president, you need a coalition. You need people to come around you and support your candidacy. Even those that, you know, may not 100 percent agree with everything. You know, that's what's great about our Democratic Party. We don't have to agree. Like there was and I'll be the first one to say I was part of it, a uh, debate about Biden stepping down. And, you know, I think it's 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 healthy to have that. And and you look at the other political party where it's just a personality. And so I think it's it's great for for us to have these various coalitions. And now I see Republicans for Harris, which, you know, they're going to have completely different views when it comes to certain things than I may have. And you know, I think at the end of the day, we are in a different time where it's a bit more gray and we're going to build together. And I think that's what everybody is looking for in this election is someone that has that energy. And I feel like I really respected President Biden and I really loved what he has done for the past three and a half years. Um, but I feel like people were just tired of politics as usual. And Vice President Harris can reach across multi generations and feel personal. And that's the thing that I always came across being in, you know, these events. And she always took the time to listen to people, especially the kids. Um, and so uh, I feel like people are starting to feel heard and seen. And I think that's something that we haven't had in a while. So I think the, the, I will say, I think, and I know that the convention is going to be amazing and it's going to be a lot of partying, um, good parties, like, you know, because we are endorsing the first black female president candidate on a major ticket. And it's the energy is just there. The energy is just different from even from what I remember in 2008. I just feel like it's a different, it's like, Obama level energies, but I think it's amped up a little bit more because I feel like Gen X um, has a really great ability to blend politics with pop culture that is really different. I do want to talk a lot more about what's ahead for you guys in Chicago so we can sort of pivot here to the mechanics. But the first thing about the mechanics is that you won't technically be nominating Kamala Harris in Chicago. That's going to happen first on Zoom. So tomorrow at nine o'clock, we will be getting rolling emails. So it's going to be virtual like it was in 2020 for um, the 2020 uh, nomination process. And so we're going to get an email. We fill it out and we email it back to them. And we have to do this by August 7th. And this was in place since May um, because in the state of Ohio, they this, the Ohio state legislature did change the law, but they needed two thirds majority to have it affected immediately. But they didn't have that. So out of caution with legality issues, we are nominating our Democratic nominee, who is now going to be Kamala Harris by August 7th. Mm -hmm. And that way she will be on the ballot in Ohio. And so that's just to help prevent against um, any potential craziness that the Republicans may have up their sleeves. Yeah. And, and I think they are trying all the shenanigans they can come up with. They always do. Yeah, everything against the wall and seeing if anything <laughs> sticks. And I mean, it worked in twenty uh, the year 2000. So, <laughs> you know. Yep. All right. So uh, let's talk about going to Chicago. Uh, who's been to a convention national convention before. Okay, John, um, what do we expect? Well, I was a delegate in 2000, and I was a campaign staffer or volunteer in 84, 88, and 92, Mondale, Dukakis, Clinton. Um, so being a delegate means you get to be one of the cool kids and you get invited to things. Um, it's basically a huge pep rally. Even if we are not now nominating the presidential candidate at the convention, 
We're going to have four days of listening to candidates from all over the country, get a national audience. They will debate and vote on the platform, which is the Democratic Party's statement of principles. And it's just it's a great opportunity to socialize and network and fire up the troops and everything else, even though it, it's been a long time since a convention has actually decided a nomination. So it's just, it's, it's a lot, it's an excuse to have a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. So Nikita and, and uh, Ryan, you guys have not been to a national convention. No, this is a first time for me and I'm super excited. Um, I think I'm going to be like a sponge and just soak up everything and hopefully I will not have system overload and Hopefully I'll be able to sleep while I'm there, but if not, it's okay. I'll sleep when I come back home, but I'm super excited. And especially for the times that we're in mm -hmm. and especially for the things, the way things have happened, you know, uh, people that know that I'm a delegate to the democratic national convention, it was like, Oh, you know, you're about to make history. You're going to be a part of history. It's going to be amazing. You know, I wish you well, come back and tell us everything that happened. Um, so I truly am not the fact that I'm just going, but just the fact that I'm going and I'm going to be able to learn. I'm going to be able to gain knowledge that's going to help me to be a better chair for the York County Democratic Party. Um, and really, I'm basically going to learn. I'm kind of a nerd in this sense because this is the kind of stuff that excites me. I get really excited uh, around politics and I just want to be able to learn so that I can come back and have conversations with people um, just to let them know what the experience was like and to bring back the knowledge of what it's like on that level. Mm -hmm. I had one guy, I did a radio station on Sunday called Higher Definition Radio, and the topic was, um, is America ready for a black woman president? And so the host of the show, Lamar Ratchford said, Nikita, you know, you hear about delegates, but you're actually the first delegate that I've ever known. Like, what's that like? And so had to explain that process. And then I thought about it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm the first delegate that I've ever known. You know, you hear about it, but you don't know what it's like until you're actually in, in it. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful for the 5th Congressional District for thinking enough of me to vote for me to be a delegate. Um, and I plan to go serve the 5th Congressional District very well in York County. Talking about the mechanics, how did did you two get to be delegates? And John, how did, how did John get to be an alternate? Well, I can speak for, you know, the process and, and y'all step in and, and help me out where I mess up. But to be a delegate, you do have to vote in the presidential primary, the Democratic presidential primary. You have to attend your county convention. You have to attend your state party convention. Um, and, and so you put your name in, in the hat that way. And you is like, and I was telling somebody, it's like you're, campaigning all I'm running over for, for office yeah because you're you're going around you're asking mm -hmm. people for your votes um you're letting people know that you are a delegate and you would like for them to cast your vote for for you and so that's what you did you go around and you campaign and you ask people in the fifth congressional district and i think i received the, the most votes for the SC, you did. Um, south carolina um fifth congressional district. So mm -hmm. that's an honor within itself to have received that. And I was really amazed that, you know, a lot of that people thought enough of me to cast their vote for me. So I can't do nothing but go in and be great for the fifth congressional district. And I'm very honored to serve. So there was two ways they had the congressional district election happen before the state convention. And I was elected as a party leader elected official category because I'm the second vice chair of the county party. And then you can also run at, at large. And so, like Nikita was saying, you really work that convention floor. I think I walked four or five miles that day talking to people. And um, I had a very fabulous suit and the night before at the, <laughs> the, the dinner that people remembered me from. And so they're like, oh, you were green suit last night. You, That's right. OK, OK, we got you. We got you. Don't worry. And it's just really having different people to assist you that 
are already up there that are um, in, in within the party and and just really having the ability to talk to different people at different times and, and introducing yourself and not being afraid of talking to people, really. There are multiple ways you can get chosen. So mm -hmm. um, Nikita was chosen through the congressional district elections, which were online ahead of the state convention. And then at the state convention in Columbia on May 18th, um, you elect a group of people. So you have multiple chances to get elected. I was not elected at the congressional district level. Um, you have party leader elected official category, and I'm on the state executive committee. I'm also deputy secretary of the state party. So I ran under that, didn't get that. And then they elect at large, which is basically anybody who wants to run on a statewide basis. And they, they elected a certain number of at large people at large, but those, the, I believe seven of us who did not win at large, but came in the seven top people who didn't get elected were chosen as alternates. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of a different strategy. You know, they were working the floor and so forth. The secretary of the state party, Joyce Rose Harris was also running for delegate. And she and I had originally agreed that we were going to swap off taking minutes so that each of us could work the floor. Yeah. And I just, I kept right before the meeting, I said to Joyce, um, you know, why don't you go campaign and I'll take the minutes. So my electoral strategy was that the entire convention saw me sitting up on stage, taking notes and doing the work. <laughs> and they passed the microphone around to the party leader and at large candidates, just so we could introduce ourselves to the convention before those votes were held. And because I was on stage, I was standing above everybody else when it was my turn. I saw that. So I'm going to hand the microphone to John and we'll just pass it down, okay? Good morning, John Holder, York County. Thank you very much. I didn't originally intend that, but I figured it was going to work. Yes, right. He, he um, cheated. Know, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that I'd strategy works strategy. for him. Not cheating, if, if strategy. I, if I cheated, I wouldn't be an alternate. I'd be a delegate. Um, but, you know, we all have our own ways of doing it. I have run, I ran for delegate in 88, 92, 96, lost, 2001. I was the last person elected out of the 5th District in 2000. 2004, I lost. 08 and 12, I was living in Charlotte, so I did not run out of North Carolina. 16, I was back here, ran and lost. 2020, ran and lost. So I'm not, you know, my batting average is not terribly good, but at least I got in as an alternate this time. Yeah. So I didn't do any campaigning. I showed up at one Zoom call and, and made my pitch saying, well, if I, if I get to go, I'll bring my camera and I'll show you what it's like on the floor because you never get to see what it's like down there for the delegates on the floor. I didn't even know if they'd let me do that. Maybe they would, uh, but I didn't make it. So my pitch now is I'm 74. I don't have that many more chances. So if I'm still around in four years here in South Carolina, let me go. I, 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 Somebody who beat me in, I believe, 1988 when I was 26. So I had some more chances. Um, I think this gentleman was about 80. <laughs> and he, he, he said, I don't know how many more chances I got. So please elect me. And, you know, so I could, so it was a strategy that. that worked. Yeah. So, Just well, get, well, give it time. Yes. Yeah. Cause at um, that point I'll be 78, 78. So you, you'll I'll, still almost, be, you, al almost old enough to run for president. I was going to say <laughs> now I am going to be, um, one uh, part of my sales pitch was that, the first week of the semester at Winthrop is during the convention. So my first class meeting is actually going to be a Zoom from the convention. So I'll, you know, I'll have some live coverage and hopefully be able to do some interviews with people. Now, of course, you know, as a professor, I have to give equal time. So I'm going to invite some people who've been Republican delegates and so forth in to speak for the class after I get back. But I am going first. So, I mean, this is a great educational opportunity for students. Yeah, that that will be awesome. If I can help you in any way, uh, let me know. Uh, you know, I appreciate that anchoring from the from the big studio above the bonus room and stuff. 
as I was mentioning, the folks sitting, the delegates sit there on the floor. I think about the only time, I may be wrong about this, but I think about the only time they show up on TV is when they say something like, the great state of South Carolina is proud to cast its, how many, how many votes do we get? I think 64. Pr proud to cast its 64 votes for the next president of the United States, Vice President Kamala, I don't know her middle name, Kamala Harris. David, and, and that's the, great state of, the great state of South Carolina, America's leading producer <laughs> of peaches and the home of five interstate highways, <laughs> is proud to cast its votes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, th and that's it for the pedestrians down there in the delegation. Otherwise, you're just waving banners and cheering at the appropriate moments and, and maybe some of the inappropriate moments. Uh, when do the parties happen? Because you're going to be on the floor until like 10, 11 o'clock. 10, 11 o'clock. Central time. <laughs> <laughs> the, the I mean, listen, I'm, I, Dr. Holder was talking about the year 1988. I won't say what year I was born, but I'm ready to party. Um, <laughs> also, I did find these at a flea market over the weekend. Ooh. There you go. Uh, I'll still have one of those, I think. And then I found this one. And so, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be fun. But, you know, we also have the caucus and council meetings that happen from nine to like three um, at, it's the Jarvis Center. I don't know. So they want, they but, want you to be up. They want you to get a party all night. And then they want you to be in a meeting at nine well, o'clock. You know, the parties aren't the purpose why we're there, Gary. <laughs> we're there to nominate Kamala Harris to be the Democratic nominee. Well, as we as and we already discussed, no, you're not, because that's already going to have been happened by email. That is going to happen. But just that energy in that room, just thinking back in 2008 when it was Barack Obama, then uh, former president, and, and having that energy, th that electric energy to really see the first woman of color, the first black woman, um, and she is black, Donald Trump. Let's play it in case people didn't hear it the first time. She was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And South Asian woman, to have that the nomination for a major party ticket is just truly historic being a part of that in that in that energy because i always think of like when you're at a concert you feel all that excitement in that energy but just thinking of that energy of that historic moment like the that day is going to be forever in history books was it last week nikita that we had to fill out that form the petition form to officially yeah. nominate her i took a screenshot of it and i was like i need to get this printed out or something yeah. like this is like my name will forever be a delegate to nominate Kamala Harris. The parties are there, uh, but I'm looking forward to the the caucus and the council meetings in the mornings before, um, just to hear how the party's going to really engage the different individuals in our country. And I think that's what's really important. And to you, know, I'm looking at it now. It's we have the LGBTQ caucus, we have the rural council, um, which I'm really looking forward to, Environmental Climate Crisis Council. You know, we have interfaith, poverty, seniors, <laughs> what, what disability. Is the, what is the purpose for all of those? What do they do? Uh, just just really engagement on the uh, on the and how to engage your community. When you think about South Carolina, we are a rural state. That's how we are in the, in the national level. But so I'm thinking of how we can engage some of our rural areas that um, are in York County to network too, to meet different people throughout the Democratic Party and, and get resources that they may do that we need to incorporate here. Um, so this, really it sounds like there's a lot of things going on at the convention besides the nominating and the big speeches that they show oh, yeah. prime time. Yeah. There's just a ton of background you know work. Mm -hmm. Like Brian said, basically the networking, you may hear something that you may be able to bring back. To, we may be able to bring back to York County to help our residents, our citizens here in York County that we may never even thought of. You know, mm -hmm. that's what that's what I'm looking for to um, how did they handle situations? You know, when these things arise, like maybe there's something I don't know. Again, I'm going to be a sponge and soak up everything, you know, and then, uh, hopefully get an opportunity to see people that we see on these news syndicates and be able to hear from them in person. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Mm -hmm. 
So I have been hearing sponsors on most of the podcasts that I, I listen to about some probably food supplement that you can take. They keep saying, if you've had a few drinks the night before, you shouldn't have to pay for that all day the next day. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what the name of the product is. And I think they're being euphemistic when they say a few drinks. But Nikita, have you built up a supply of that stuff? Are you ready to get your party on? Oh, no. <laughs> you know what? Well, my body saved. Another tough question. Some rest. Huh? <laughs> Another tough question for you. Sorry. <laughs> no, when my body tells me to lay down, I lay down. You know, um, I got to remember I'm not 25 or 21 <laughs> back in college at Bennett College again, um, going to the parties at A&T University. Uh, so when my body say get some rest, get some rest. Uh, but, you know, I'm ready to, to enjoy the festivities and to, you know, just to be able to network and communicate. I think I heard Kel Fowler say, you know, she have lifelong friends all across the United States um, just from being a part of the these conventions. And so that's what I'm looking forward to, you know, Whenever it's time to reach out and extend the olive branch, you know, I want to be able to have the opportunity to do those things, to ask for help and support, and um, just to be able to network and communicate, to bring that information back to your county, to help build your county, and to help turn your county blue. You think they can show you how to do that? Of course. <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be excellent. <laughs> that would be awesome. Now, the when I was... In the playbook has been written. We just got to um, utilize what's in the playbook. So when I was a delegate in 2000, the Herald did a daily series of interviews with me over the course of the convention week. The last day, all I talked about was how tired I was <laughs> because it, it's an 18 hour day. Um, even if you're not, you know, out partying for six hours after the convention gets out. You're up early, there's a delegation breakfast, there are meetings, you're on TV, you're attending the sessions, and they're, they're socializing, but it's a lot of work. And I go to bed earlier than I did 24 years ago, um, <laughs> as Nikita was saying. So, um, it, you know, it's, it's a grind, but it's absolutely worth it. Thank God for Diet Coke, Red Bull, <laughs> and Celsius. Are, are you guys expected to be sitting in your seats during all the big speeches um, in the evening? Yeah. And are there, there are speeches during the day too, right? Mm -mm, what, no. I mean, what time does well, the convention come together as a, as a whole convention during the day? You have the gavel will start like at five, six o'clock okay, central so the, time. So is there but not, prime not, time, but we have to get there. So we also were told, you know, the, the fire marshal will shut the convention hall down. Like mm -hmm. if, 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 if it's the capacity, which it now, because of who the nominee is, it will be. And we heard stories about how I think it was Dukakis's priest couldn't get in or pastor. Um, but so we, that's why he lost. <laughs> right. Um, and so, you know, we are highly encouraged to get there as early as you can I have the things that I want to do in the, that morning and then I'm going to scoot on over there and they have the buses that take the delegates from the, where the caucuses and council meetings are the convention hall. Um, and so it's going to be a fun, exciting experience just to hear president Obama give a speech and, 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 or even I've never heard president Clinton give a speech in, in real life. Democrats have really great speakers and really great individuals to give speeches but the prime time, that's when all the good stuff will happen. Yeah, and Gary, you know, a, a lot of people have um, came up to me and said, we want to see you do an interview. So you make sure you get in front <laughs> of the camera and do an interview from York for York County. So, you know, we got the, all those opportunities, even though we'll be in the, you know, standing on the floor. Um, but hopefully, you know, some of us will get opportunities to to get interviews, you know, on national TV. That, that would be cool. Because then we can come play it here on our podcast. Yeah. So this consider this your warm up, and they're going to ask you the tough questions. A while ago, a couple months ago, some of the talk was that because that there was some dissension in the farther left ranks of the Democratic Party, mostly dealing with uh, how we're handling the situation in Israel and Gaza, 
that those folks were going to be bringing big protests to Chicago. And mm -hmm. people were saying it could be echoes of 1968. I'm not hearing that now. I don't know if it's just because it hasn't captured the headlines of the news and if people are still planning it. Have you guys heard anything about that? There are always protests at conventions. Um, there will be pro-Palestinian people there protesting the Biden-Harris administration's policies. There will probably be Trump supporters there. Um, they will be kept a safe distance mm -hmm. away from the convention. Yeah. Not only will they not be able to get in, they won't be able to get in through the security perimeter, and they, they probably won't be able to be heard on TV. So they absolutely will not disrupt the convention. This is not their first rodeo. They know how to um, prevent this kind of thing from disrupting a convention, mm -hmm. particularly since 1968 in Chicago. Yeah. yeah. There'll be TV crews out there where they are, and they'll get some but coverage. The Democrats had a convention in, what, 96 with Clinton in Chicago? Yeah. After? So this is not the first time. And no. the people that have been running the convention... Like the guy of head of transportation for the DNC for the convention has been doing it for 30 something years. Mm -hmm. And so I, I always support people giving their first amendment, right. And I don't foresee a crazy protest happening. My last question, who loves Chicago deep dish pizza? Well, I know I'm going to have <laughs> some before I come back to Rock Hill. Mm -hmm. I've never had any and Me. my uncle, it grew up in Chicago and I was with them last weekend for my sister's wedding, and he's like, just deep dish, <laughs> just order a slice and take a, a bite. It's it's deep, and you'll get full really quick. But um, If you're an amateur at it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which I am. I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm, a, I'm a Chicago pizza professional, having spent like 30 years in Chicago, so. Well, you guys, you have to give us a list of where to go and what to see. Yeah. Uh, I left Chicago in 1986. It is not the same city. Oh. Um, I can tell you, um, Uno's and Douay's and Gino's East are downtown. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the, the easy places to get to. Malnati's, some of the others are out in the suburbs. So you'll probably want to go to, uh, my favorite was Gino's East. But Uno's and Douay's, same o o ownership. They're the original, so they're, now, they're I probably going to be pretty busy. I've had the chain version of Uno. I've. I've had Chicago deep dish pizza at an Uno in Washington, D.C., <laughs> but I have never had it in Chicago. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. They had, they, now, had, the other they had an Uno's in Raleigh opened up while I was living up there. And so, of course, I went. And my impression was they did not give the chains the recipe because it was not the same. And I could tell. Uh, we got a, a, a chain uh, here just across the line over in um, a Waxhaw called Rosati's. And it is as close to authentic as I think you can get without being in Chicago. So it's pretty good, but it's a 30 minute, it's, it was an hour round trip for me. <laughs> I, and you're right, Ryan, one slice is a meal. Yeah. I mean, it's thick, it is heavy, it is calorie laden, but uh, that, I do not stop at one. And, and I can prove it by stepping on the scale. <laughs> All right. Has anybody now, else got? Now I, oh, go ahead, I Tom. have had Chicago hot dogs in Chicago. That's the other thing. Yeah. Chicago hot yeah. dogs are a big deal. At Wrigley Field and whatever Comiskey Park is called now. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. If they, if they, U.S. guaranteed rate something. <laughs> that, Whoever the sponsor is that, this month. That's sad. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, anybody else got something that they want to get off their chest before we go? Just say I'm super excited about going and thank you to the South Congressional District 5 for voting for me to um, attend and I will represent us well. All right. I want to thank our panel, uh, John Holder, going to be an alternate. And uh, what's your official other capacities with uh, the Democratic Party? I'm Deputy Secretary of the State Party. I'm on the Executive Council of the state party from the fifth district. I'm on the executive committee of the state party, along with Darlene Mansfield from York County, and uh, which puts me on the York County party board 
and I am the precinct committeeman from Ogden Precinct. You're hogging all the jobs. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> all right. Ryan Stevens, um, in addition to being an official delegate, a full-fledged delegate, unlike John, who's only going to be an alternate, uh, what else do you do for the party? I am the second vice chair of the York County Democratic Party. And I just want to say to everybody in the South Carolina Democratic Party that voted for me, thank you. And I will represent all of us well in Chicago. And Nikita Jackson, I know you're the chair of the York County Democratic Party and an official delegate. Anything else you want to say before we go? Yep, I'm on the rules um, and platform committee for the state Democratic Party, the part of the county chairs for the South Carolina State Democratic Party. Um, and so I've been enjoying it. I will say the one thing, the Rules and Regulations Committee, what we voted on at the State Democratic Party is what's been taken to the DNC to be included into um, the Rules and Regulations for the DNC. So that was a an amazing thing. That's um, a big feather, I've yeah. Never, yeah, it was something new and different. And so that's what I mean when, you know, I'm soaking up and learning a whole lot of things because a lot of the things, rules that the the 46 counties of, of South Carolina submitted, we didn't even accept a lot of those because those were the rules and regulations of the platform in the previous year. So it was a lot of things that I've learned. And again, I'm going to be that sponge soaking up so I can learn and bring all that information back to your county to make us great. And bring it back to um, to our little podcast here so that we can... Uh... Mm -hmm. We can all learn what uh, what has been going on. I am Gary Pierce. I am the uh, producer of the show. These guys are the delegates. Thank you guys for being on the show. Thank you for all of your service and work to the York County and South Carolina Democratic Party, the National Democratic Party. Have fun in Chicago. I am envious. And um, I got because I, I lived there for so long, I got to go back sometime soon. And that will be it for this episode of the York County Democratic Party, YC, DP, TV, YouTube show, and podcast. Everybody wave goodbye, and I will say over and out. Thanks, Gary. Let me Thanks, stop recording Gary. here.